I'm Brother Fred Dilger, and this is a Friar Life. While there are many common aspects of living the life of a Franciscan friar, there is hardly a blueprint to follow. Called to live the gospel of Jesus Christ in the way of St. Francis, no two lives are the same. This is a friar life. So I get here early just to basically get the place set up and organized before the day starts. During the weekends, we have early meal. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have early meal at 11.30, so we don't have a lot of time to get things ready, whereas during the course of the week, our main meal is at 4.30, so you have all day to get ready for that. So I basically come in here, get things organized, get the mop water, set the tables up, um, whatever has come in the night before, try to get that organized. We are blessed with an uh, embarrassment of riches. We have so many donors who bring us so many things. So the challenge that we have is actually where to store it before we try to move it and get it out of here. And also it allows me an opportunity to kind of have a active meditation, I call it, where I can think about not really what I'm doing, but why I'm doing all of this, and to kind of, uh, um, I guess, kind of a leftover from my days in the monastery, just pray for the people we're about to serve and about to encounter. And a lot of it is to pray for the um, patience that the day can definitely require. So it's like as you're praying, you, you're filling up this backpack with patience, which you will be pulling out all day long. You don't want it to to run empty before the end of the day. So after my um, morning of basically work and kind of silent private meditation and prayer, we come together as a community. And that's really, really important in our you know, Franciscan spirituality is to come together um, as a community to pray the office. Beyond the vines, though the yield of the olive fail, and the terraces produce no nourishment. After um, we have our prayer, we have a little bit of a break, and then we have our community mass for the entire community, the sisters, the friars, the lay people. And that is really important to us because we are a Eucharistic-based community, and we come together as a community to be fed so that we have the strength, the love, the determination, the wherewithal to go out and to feed our brothers and sisters, uh, both literally and figuratively. This is the most glamorous part of my job. We're not going to really solve the monumental problem of poverty and hunger in our world. What our job here to do is, is to shine a bit of light and to try to, for these few moments we're here, make life a little more bearable. Uh, for people and um, sometimes it can be overwhelming we spend a lot of our time pushing rocks up a hill just to watch them roll back the next day but um, you know that's life and we just keep soldiering on and keep getting up and doing everything again the next day There you go. Tell me what you're doing. So right now we're doing tickets, which we divide up between seniors and families and everyone else who we call singles. So this just helps uh, us keep a track of how many people uh, we serve. And how you doing? All right. 
There you go. Thank you. And helps keep it organized once they get into the yard and for the maitre d' to get them seated. My ministry where I was before, I wore the habit almost all the time, every day. Here, we don't wear the habit. Uh, we go to Mass, uh, Holy Days of Obligation, <laughs> Christmas, Easter, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of dust it off, professions. But basically here, it's, it's very difficult for us to maneuver. We do so much physical labor, it's hard. And the other part of it, too, is we don't really want to have a separation between ourselves and the guest. Uh, we're all kind of one, one big family. We don't want to appear too much of a, thank you, we'll see you later, take it easy, too much of an authority. So, so there have been a couple of, of times where it's gotten pretty dicey out here where, where people have uh, like pulled a knife, you know, you're, you're thinking everything's fine, and you're saying, oh, maybe better if I bring you a meal to go, which is another thing we do. We don't ever deny someone food. We'll have meals to go that we give people if it's a little too much for them to, uh, to come in. Um, but one time uh, uh, someone got by me. I was talking to another guest, and they got by me and got in, and they had um, a big bottle. Oh of what looked like either urine or acid <laughs> and uh, they were really completely out of their mind and, and wouldn't leave the table. So um, the coordinator was very concerned. It was causing a lot of strife in the dining room so I went in from here and just started singing to them and uh, pretended the whole thing was a big opera and singing and it was like Pied Piper. They started smiling, got up, took their bottle of whatever it was and just followed me out and we just slowly closed the gate and got them out of here safely. So when in doubt, just burst into song and they're sure to, uh, to follow you. Well, this is actually the best time of day after the, the morning of getting everything set and then the actual meal and running around and doing all of that. Then we, this is kind of the cool down, you know. I um, entered uh, religious life relatively later in life. I was uh, 37 when I really started seriously considering um, that there might be something more or different out there. And I'd never even really thought of anything. I had a uh, great life. I wasn't unhappy by any stretch of the imagination. I just, uh, I was finding that um, success and achievements had started to feel a lot like Chinese food. You know, it tasted great initially, and like two hours later, I was like starving to death and needed something more. And I kept going back to the refrigerator thinking, what else is there to eat, you know? Basically, I think, with the Franciscans, there is only one black and white, and that is God's love for us. Everything else is gray and muddy and dirty, and you sort all through it, and you spend your life trying to find your way, but the one thing we are absolutely positive of is God's love for us and, and, and our responsibility to share that love with all those around us. I was out to dinner with um, a friend once. He hadn't seen me in forever and, and took me out to dinner and, and couldn't um, wait to hear everything and it was it was a nice evening we had a great conversation great dinner and then they came and asked if we wanted dessert and I ordered um, a big fabulous dessert because it's very seldom now that I get to go to really nice restaurants and the dessert came and I was just diving into it and he turned to me and said it must be so nice not to have to worry about what you look like anymore and so basically I just turned to him and said it's heaven so Basically, all those kind of things I used to worry so much about before, I really uh, <laughs> don't think quite as strongly about nowadays. I see you have a tattoo show. Can you tell me about your tattoo? Yes, I, I... Is that normal among friars? It seems to be getting normal among friars. I, had, I got all my tattoos when I was in my um, 20s. And what's very interesting is um, all the tattoos I have are all um, Catholic uh, symbols, which I'm very happy for. They're nothing Satan rules or anything like that. They're all... They're all Catholic. In fact, my, when I called uh, the vocation office, my first question was, are tattoos a problem? Because we could probably end the conversation right here. To which they answered, no. Can we see them all? And I said, most of them. But, uh, but anyway, yes. So um, it surprises people that uh, friars uh, have tattoos and um, are basically just uh, regular old, 
old people like everybody else. The nice thing about being a Franciscan friar um, is that we have the ability to use our gifts and our, our talents, um, whatever they may be. When Francis uh, founded the order, he didn't found it to be one thing, to be priest or, or to be doctors or, or uh, to be professors, but really basically just to live the gospel. So I used to do architecture um, and interior design, and when I left I thought I would never do it again, but that's not at all the case. I do all the kind of architectural um, design work for the province, so whether we're working on uh, redoing a new chapel or building a new property, um, the province will come to me and ask me for, for my assistance in that, and it gives me an opportunity to, to keep that part of my life alive, so um, I really appreciate that. I'm Brother Fred Dilger, and this is A Friar Life. Okay, and then uh, one time where it doesn't look like you're in pain to <laughs> I was in pain, actually. <laughs> That's real. <but> okay. <laughs> okay. And yes, I'm stuck being a friar. <laughs> yes. Please help me. I'm Brother Fred Dozier and call the police. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so.